So the discussion I'd like to have with you now is about safety in the industrial drawing environment. Uh, you might think this is kind of a funny lecture to have. I mean, after all, uh, it's not like we're in the wood shop, right? It's not like we have table saws and drill presses and uh, the need for eye protection while we're working in a CAD or technical drawing environment. Uh, we're not over in the metal area with welding. Uh, there's not sparks flying, there's not band saws cutting lengths of pipe and tube, right? Uh, or even in the machine shop, you know, if you've walked into a machine shop, you know that there's some high-speed hardened steel cutters removing material, there's chips, there's solvents, there's all kinds of things that could hurt us if we're not paying attention. And it's true that these are highly hazardous areas that require some attention to safety, but, but that doesn't mean that our area is not. In fact, there are a lot of uh, opportunities, I hate to use that word, uh, opportunities for disaster. Uh, and a lot of times emergencies and accidents are the result of just not paying attention uh, when it's, we're talking about the kind of environment that we have for our industrial drawing labs over at Bakersfield College. So it's not paying attention, it's not thinking about what you're doing or where you are that could land you in a whole bunch of trouble. Uh, sometimes it's horseplay, you know, it's hard not to goof around with your friends sometimes. And while playing drink from the fire hose sounds like fun, uh, in the end, it's probably not that great an idea, right? Or using tools if we're not really sure how to use them, that can get us into some trouble too. So the idea is how do we maintain a safe environment as safe as possible? Uh, what kind of protective equipment do we need if we are working with some of these hazards in the industrial drawing labs? Uh, I don't really think that's probably adequate eye protection. That's just me though. Uh, and then let's not take any unnecessary risks. You know, uh, sometimes we have an idea and we realize later, yeah, it wasn't such a good idea after all, uh, like these, these guys here. Okay, and then in the event of an emergency, uh, the idea is stay calm. And uh, I'm not gonna play the video clip because I'll probably get binged by uh, by the television company that owns the rights to it. But if you've seen the office where they have a fire drill, uh, it's hilarious how everyone reacts badly, right? So if there's an emergency uh, at school, and no matter where you are, stay calm. Uh, and if you uh, wanna see that, you're gonna have to look this one up on your own. Okay, so we are on the lookout for danger because danger could be anywhere, uh, even in the industrial drawing lab over at BC campus. So what kind of hazards are we talking about? Well, we're talking about the fact that some of the tools we use are sharp. We're talking about some of the machines that we work with have sharp cutting edges that move by themselves. They're automatically actuated. Sometimes we work with chemicals and if we don't know how to properly handle the chemicals, we can wind up uh, doing some damage to our skin or our eyes. And uh, there are a few pieces of equipment that have heat involved and those could result in some burns if we're not careful. So. How do we take care of ourselves from those things and even from other things that are less obvious? For example, do you see the keyboard on the screen? Do you see how it's kind of bent? Now that's not a picture I took and then warped in Photoshop. That's an actual keyboard. Uh, and the reason they have keyboards like this is because if you spend all day, every day typing on a regular straight keyboard, uh, over time that does damage to your body. It's hazardous. Isn't that interesting? So this is called an ergonomic keyboard and what it does is it uh, let's you type and hold your wrists at a more natural angle. And the idea is if they're at a more natural angle, you won't have wrist pain and carpal tunnel pain if you're in a career where you wind up typing quite often like industrial drawing involves, right? How about this guy, mouse? Um, people that click on the mouse all day, every day for years, wind up with some real severe carpal tunnel pain in their wrist and in, in, in their hand. Uh, how do we avoid that suffering? Well, we've got to take some strategies. Uh, stretching is one of those things, but you know, here's another one. This is a vertical mouse. It's so interesting, yeah. So the uh, the damage that's done by leaning over the mouse with your hand and clicking, clicking, clicking is alleviated by using a device like this. Uh, the plotter, a plotter is a large format pl printer, right? And the idea is it's got an automatic cutter in there. So if we're not careful where our, our hands are or where our clothing is and we're leaning over the machine, we might f find that we have part of our clothing or our finger removed when the guillotine slides down and cuts the paper after it's some printed a sheet. 
And then this is a machine called a Diazo machine. It's an older blue printing machine for making reproductions and photocopy of uh, old drawings. Uh, this machine uses ammonia. And uh, if you've ever spent a day locked in a room with ammonia fumes, I got to tell you, you uh, get a lot of brain cell death that, that day. So if we're working with chemicals, make sure you know what the chemicals are. Uh, make sure you're ventilated uh, or have a respirator on. Uh, make sure you're not killing your brain for your employer because when your brain's done, you don't have a job anymore. He doesn't care about you. He's not going to take care of you. This is a 3D printer. And uh, on the right here, we have a laser cutting system. Uh, the laser involves heat, right? It's using electricity to generate heat, to generate a laser beam, to cut through material. Uh, that means we have to know what things get hot and what things are hazardous and how to avoid getting ourselves hurt when we're using it. On the 3D printer, um, 3D printer is also very hot inside as it melts and extrudes plastic. So if we're working around these tools, we want to make sure we know what the hazards are so we don't wind up giving ourselves an owie. And just beyond that, I mean, look at drafting tools, right? Drafting tools are typically have sharp edges or points on them. And uh, I've really not even had a problem with this at the college, more so at the high school with a bunch of, you know, 14 year old boys wanting to sword fight after lunch. Uh, not so much here, but there is always the, the chance of getting cut or stabbed by something if we're not paying attention to what we're doing, right? And then on top of that, you've got all the other normal hazards about a work environment that you have to be aware of, right? Because there could be danger lurking anywhere. Okay, so how can we maintain safe area? We've got suggestions that might be handy or helpful. Those is maintaining your area safe, whether that's at the campus or at your home. Uh, try to reduce clutter around the area you're working in. If you have personal items, Try to put them in one place and your work items in another area. If you have cords and cables hanging underneath your table, connecting your computer, uh, be careful you don't get entangled in them, right? And then if you are walking away from your table, whether it's at the campus or at home, right, it's always a good idea to slide your chair underneath so that people don't trip over it and we're not blocking any aisleways. Eye strain is a big problem. For people that do CAD, if you don't take care of yourself, you're going to have some squinty eyes. Uh, so you got to position your monitor properly. You want to monitor about 20 to 30 inches away from you. Uh, and you want it at the level of your eyes directly in front of you. Uh, if it's too high or too low, now we're putting some strain on the back of our neck. That's not needed. Uh, there are ways of changing the size of the icons and the size of the screen. If you have a hard time seeing, we can make the little buttons bigger. Okay. Uh, Lighting in the room, if we turn the lights off while we're doing CAD, we're going to reduce glare, and that's a big deal. Uh, having white light shining at your face all day long is uh, straining to your, to your eyes. Having a black background cuts down on that glare significantly, and being in a dim room cuts down on that glare also. And then every once in a while, it's necessary to rest your eyes, and what we mean is look away from the screen. Look away for, from the screen for a minute and just refocus your eyes on something else. Look outside a window, uh, look in the corner of wherever you're working, look at a book, uh, look at the person working next to you, look at something so that you're not just looking 25 inches directly in front of you and not uh, diverting your gaze to anything else. We also want to avoid unhealthy posture and extended periods of inactivity. So uh, make sure when you sit, you don't sit in a way that's gonna make you look like this guy, right? Uh, the back of your chair should make contact with your back. So you're sitting up straight. Uh, you should be able to have your feet flat on the floor while you're sitting and they shouldn't be uh, dangling. And they, your wrists, make sure your wrists are neutral and not bent while you're working on the keyboard. Uh, mouse shouldn't be too far away. And then remember the worst thing you can do is sit. I know that sounds crazy, right? But the worst thing you do for your body is sit and not move. So you need to get up and move around. Uh, take a 10 minute break every hour just to get up and do a lap or two around the house, uh, walk around the office, go outside, walk back in. You need to move your blood around. Uh, if you don't, that, that's problematic down the road for your body. All right, so there's some healthy habits because what happens if we don't take advantage of healthy habits well, we're going to wind up starting off looking like this. So 
We start off all healthy and looking good with good complexion and if we don't take care of our bodies and get out in the sunshine occasionally and make sure we're not living on Doritos, uh, then we're going to turn into this, right? You'll be a, be a cat guy with horrible complexion and bad posture and a vitamin D deficiency, right? And squinty eyes. So, got to take care of the bod, okay? And that is also part of safety. So, uh, our motto needs to be safety first, right? Right. So appreciate you giving attention to our little discussion about safety as we try to make it lighthearted. Hopefully it sticks with us. When we do get back to campus and we are working in the lab, make sure that we're proceeding safely even though it doesn't seem like a hazardous environment.